somebody in that room had a gun, the result would have been better. So should people get armed the way you are? That's up to them, but I will tell you, I feel much better being armed. What about teachers? I think that if you had the teacher, if, assuming they knew how to use the weapon, which hopefully they would, uh, you would have been a lot better when this maniac walked into class starting to shoot people. From CBS News, Donald Trump on Face the Nation there, defending the Second Amendment as President Obama pushes for executive action on gun control. Meantime, gun laws in California have just become a lot more restrictive. Over the weekend, Governor Jerry Brown signing a bill banning concealed weapons from California schools and universities. But will that really make schools safer? Rejoining us for a discussion, former New York Police Commissioner Bernie Carrick, from Newsmax Washington, Skyping in from Washington, Ari Rabenhoft, host of The Agenda on Sirius XM Radio and a former advisor to Senate Minority Leader Harry Reid. Ari, we have heard in research that gun-free school zones don't work. What's wrong with allowing students and faculty to carry concealed weapons? First off, that, that research is flawed on its face. A lot of it was conducted by a completely discredited researcher when the National Academy Great. of Sciences... Let's, let's, okay, so you don't like the study. Tell okay. me why. Tell me why they, well, they, 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 people shouldn't be armed. Assembled a panel to look into the prevalence of... Uh, does more guns equal less crime is what they assembled a panel to look into. It. 15 of 16 people on the panel ended up disagreeing with that finding. So, but first of all, like, I think we have to look at this as an overall societal issue. The question is... Amer right now, about 40% of civilian guns in the world, civilian-owned guns in the world, are in this country. That's oh, well, what's wrong? Okay, and let's take that on its face. Bernie, what's wrong with that? Is there some sort of quota that should deprive Americans of the Second Amendment? No, I don't, I don't think so. Personally, I don't, I don't think so. And I think, you know, we, we seem to lose sight of common sense here. The common sense is the people that have guns, the people that own guns, that buy them legally, um, they're not going out and shooting people and killing people. They're not the people in Chicago shooting 82 people in a weekend and killing nine. They're not the people kill shooting 22 in Baltimore over a weekend. Um, these are people that obtained guns illegally, went out and committed violent crime. The legal gun owners, um, they're not doing any of this violent activity. Yeah. Gentlemen, let's turn to what some of the candidates have had to say, beginning with Ben Carson. Many of the places where these mass shootings occur are gun-free zones. So these people who are crazed, but not so crazy as to go into a place where they're likely to get shot, they select these places because they know that they're not going to meet resistance. Now, Ari, you've already told us how, how bad the study was on gun-free zones. But isn't there something to what has been said? Hasn't it been documented some of these guys have sought out gun-free zones because they knew they could wreak havoc and basically no, shoot if they wanted to? There were a few studies on that. Let me give you an example. Uh, Very James, quickly. James Holmes, the Aurora movie theater killer. We have his diary. The, the, he wrote down everything, why he chose certain places. Nothing in his thing. He talked about the exits of the movie theater, how it was, he said he didn't want to hit an airport because it would send the wrong message. He never said anything about the movie theater being a gun-free zone, yet people said, oh, that movie theater is a gun-free zone, that's why he hit it. His diaries were pretty explicit, it wasn't there. And let me point out another stat. The stage okay, so you, you've got a dispute about the venue. There's something else going on here, and it has to do what goes on between people's ears up in their head. Here's what Donald Trump had to say about mental health and gun control. I think if we can solve a big chunk of the mental health problem in this country, that would be so fantastic. So, Bernie, the mental health angle, that seems to get left out as people rush to ban guns, does it not? Yeah, I, I think it does, J.D. And, and look, I'm, I'm all for gun control when it comes to, you know, uh, having people... Um, do backgrounds, uh, looking at mental illness, things like this, a waiting period. I'm for that. Um, but I don't think we should take guns away from law-abiding citizens uh, and take them away from people that want to protect themselves. There is a Second Amendment, and now there are reports in the Washington Post and elsewhere that President Obama is going to take executive action for more gun control. Dr. Ben Carson appeared on the 700 Club on CBN to take exception to the notion of executive orders. What has happened uh, recently is that the legislative branch has been acting more like the peanut gallery 
uh, just sitting back and watching what the executive branch and the judicial branch do, which I think is leading to their overreach. And I'm hopeful that the president's declaration about gun control will inspire the legislative branch to stand up with a backbone and to do something. Well, the legislative branch has stood up in the past, Ari, in favor of the Second Amendment. Are you, are you okay with President Obama moving forward with executive orders? Explain why that would be a good idea. Well, I'd want to know what they were. And look, I think we have a pretty clear standard set by the court in Heller, and I agree with uh, Mr. Carrick when he says, look, I, I don't think we should just take away guns from law-abiding Americans. I, I actually shoot guns and enjoy shooting guns. I, and I agree with uh, Mr. Carrick about background checks, mental health, and I think we do need to address those issues and waiting periods. So I think actually uh, Mr. Carrick and I are probably in closer agreement than one might think on this issue. And I'd want to see what those executive orders are before I decide whether I agree with them or disagree with them. But the Supreme Court laid out a pretty clear framework in Heller that gun ownership is an individual right and I assume the president will have to abide by that. Last 20 seconds are yours, Bernie Carrick, for the last word. I think we abide by the Constitution. I don't think the president should sign any executive order that overrides the Constitution. And I would hope that Congress, um, if he did so, would deal with that. And on that note, we will thank you both. Ari Ravenhoff, Skyping in from the nation's capital, Bernie Carrick. From Newsmax, Washington, a spirited debate with uh, some agreement and some disagreement. Thanks very much. When we come back, more sanctuary cities, more illegal aliens on the lam. Jessica Vaughn has that story as Newsmax Prime continues.